Aircrete as an alternative building versus other forms of natural building. Why would I choose Aircrete? Why might you choose Aircrete over other natural forms? Uh, especially when it would seem that you could just go out in nature and get you a nice handful of straw, you know, some, some dirt, and mix it together and make yourself a house potentially for free. But perhaps above all, the most important aspect is to know why you're choosing to do what you're going to do. So if you're going to build most natural buildings, you're going to need straw. Um, and that's going to be something like oat or barley or wheat straw, something with a big stem, you know, not, um, not uh, hay because it doesn't often have a big enough stem and it's often full of seed, which is something to rot or attract pest. Um, and if you don't have a natural source readily available, then you have to buy this in. Um, and the shipping cost on a lot of that is very expensive because if you don't live in an area where it's available, it has to be trucked a long way. So if uh, I wanted to build a straw bale house or a hemp uh, house uh, right now, I wouldn't be able to because I can't just run out and get an order of this. And if I do find straw and sometimes even hemp, it's been out in the weather. Um, and so between mold beginning to grow in it and the, and the pesticide residue in the grain or in the straw, um, it's not really something you want to work with. After that, you have to consider uh, thermal mass and insulation. Uh, in terms of thermal mass, you know, you got your earth bag construction, you've got, you've got some cob, uh, you've got adobe, um, and to some extent you've got compressed earth blocks. Um, but they don't provide insulation. And while thick adobe blocks and stuff do slow the transfer of energy, ultimately uh, there's a lag time at which the average temperature is rising or dipping, depending on your climate, and then the structure becomes uncomfortable. And so you have to, like any house uh, or any normal house, you have to provide a steady input of energy, which adds to the expense of ownership. Um, and then on the other side of that, you have um, structures like straw bale and perhaps hemp. You know, like straw bale houses, super insulating um, and really easy to maintain heat and cool with very little energy and very little expense. But if you're aiming for a passive structure, you don't have the thermal mass unless perhaps you utilize the floor like a radiant heating and night sky radiant cooling floor which we'll be teaching uh, in the upcoming workshop. Um, so you have to really think about that and of course the ideal situation out there is to use insulation on the outside and thermal mass on the inside. Then you get that flywheel effect and you get a very stable temperature where often all you got to do in the summer is open up the structure at night, close it up in the day and then you're perfectly comfortable. Um, and so I guess what I'm saying is you really need to look at what it is you want to do and achieve uh, and don't be a purist about uh, the materials or the processes or the personalities um, involved in these processes and pick the best one for you. Um, you know, um, even the modern earthships, the reason the modern earthships actually work is because you have not only a big earth berm that gives you a lot more contact with the earth, but you also have a foam envelope around it. So you have a purchased, manufactured, rather expensive product around all that dirt providing insulation so that you have insulation and thermal mass. I guess I left out rammed earth. The reason a lot of people build with uh, uh, the earthship method in tires is because you don't have to get your soil mixture right. You can just pack pretty much anything into a tire and the tire belt will retain it. Uh, I think that just plain old healthy, clean, non-hydrocarbon emitting rammed earth is even better. Um, and also you got to look at expense. Um, when it comes to making super adobe or poured earth or uh, even rammed earth, uh, you've got to think about the cost of doing that often puts it up there to be equal with aircrete. Um, and aircrete, like I said, I can just literally go down to the store right now and buy it and start building with it. And it provides insulation. So if I have to choose thermal mass or insulation, I'm going to choose insulation every time because it allows me to have a comfortable house at the temperature I choose. Um, if you're okay with taking the average or whatever your climate provides, um, then certainly you can make a passive structure. 
you can use ground uh, cool tubes like they sort of do uh, in earth ships, but you need to put them down about eight feet deep. Um, so just think about what it is you're trying to achieve and why you're trying to achieve it. And hybridized versions, like at the upcoming workshop, we're actually going to be teaching how to do cast earth, and then we're going to have an insulation space of natural insulation, and then on the outside we'll have a thin wall that can discharge the heat. And so that gives us a good balance of performance, a modern building that performs very well, looks good, but is also insulating and has thermal mass. Um, and that brings us to the final point, and that's cost. You know, a lot of people, because of what's going on in the economy, because of what's going on in life, they just can't afford the same old mortgage and rent, or they just simply want to stop wasting their life paying for that and have a living retirement early or right now. And for many people, home ownership just isn't accessible outside of alternative building. Even stabilized adobe and rammed earth and poured earth, by the time you stabilize it with cement, it's not really that much cheaper than just using aircrete. And so, you know, it's really hard to beat the affordability of just aircrete and the performance of it to get something up and going. Um, obviously, if you're going to have thermal mass and you're going to have insulation, the expense is going to be higher. Um, you could almost think of it like building a brick house inside out, where the brick is on the inside and the insulated walls are on the outside. Um, and so it does add expense over just your basic standard home. So Aircrete basically wins the day in terms of, you know, affordability and availability um, and the fact that it's insulation, but it can be combined with thermal mass in the floor or the walls. Um, and so for me, uh, I think it was just the best all-around choice because ultimately by itself as something you have to get up, it's also one of the most affordable things you can do. Um, unless, of course, you build completely naturally and you're willing to deal uh, or live in what nature provides you on a, a temperature average and you're willing to put a big roof on the house and you're willing to mod uh, patch and repair cracks on a yearly basis. And therein comes the last point is maintenance. Do you want a house you can just come to and go out of and give zero Fs about it? Um, or do you want uh, or do you not mind a house that just needs a little loving care and a little smear, or a little pack of mud uh, every now and then? Um, look at all of these factors, um, durability, affordability, availability, uh, ease of construction. You know, Aircrete, um, I can put up a 450 square foot house by myself in about 10 days. Um, and, you know, if you have help, it gets even easier. And if you don't have help or you can't work that much, you just kind of do it as you go. Um, and therein being the biggest factor in what I consider alternative building is something as an alternative to the system. In other words, it's you, it, it may or may not be inspectable, it's not financed by a bank, um, and it's something that you can um, build yourself, it's, you're not hiring a company to do it. Um, it's in that act of not hiring a company and not paying a bank that you get this enormous savings that makes home ownership available to even someone uh, working a basic minimum wage job, you know, provided they're willing to delay gratification, uh, crash with somebody else, and save, save, save for a couple of years. They can have land and a house. Um, and that, that's a very empowering thing. We don't want to be stuck owning nothing because then you're at the mercy and control of other people. Um, even if you travel a lot, to have a landing pad to come back and rest and restore uh, your coffers from is very valuable because your stuff is secure uh, and you don't have to be at the mercy of staying on someone else's couch. So we have a workshop coming up that's going to have everything to do with aircrete, its engineering, its safety, its heat load calculations, installing air conditioners, night sky, night sky radiant cooling, um, it's going to include worm composting toilets, natural earth uh, cast structures, as well as how to produce all of your own food and introduction to legally lower or eliminate taxes. So if this is something that is interesting to you or intriguing, I invite you to come out and meet amazing, amazing people. Click the link below in the description to learn more. And we also have video courses, and I look forward to meeting you.